My name is Hopper. After graduating from a doctoral program in graduate school, I have been working as a researcher. I've been married to my husband Ethan for four years, and we have been living with Ethan's parents. Ethan and I used the rooms on the second floor, while my in-laws occupied the rooms on the first floor. We turned this house into a two-family home and started living together two years ago. Back when we weren't living together, I didn't really mind. But ever since we became a two-family household, my mother-in-law started harassing me. She assumes that as a researcher, I'm lazy and say things like, "Oh, Harper, you're so lucky. You can just do what you love and get by. It's carefree of you not to use work as an excuse to have children." She says these things like nagging whenever my father-in-law and husband are around. To be honest, there is some truth to her words. When we first started living together, my mother-in-law said to me, "It's about time for children." I responded by telling her that I hadn't discussed it with my husband yet. I haven't thought about having children yet. I'll talk to my husband about it. Since that day, my mother-in-law has persistently bullied me. When I tried to go out on my day off, she would step on and dirty the shoes I had prepared at the entrance. But even when I confronted her, she would just say, "I have no idea. Stop blaming others, will you?" And that's all she says. On my days off, which are weekdays. It's just my mother-in-law and me during the day. I know perfectly well that she's the only one who could be sabotaging my shoes. What's more, even if I inform her about my plans, despite it being my day off, she would say things like, "Make lunch before you go out," and if I followed her instructions and made lunch, this is terrible. It's so salty. I feel like I'm going to die. Remake it. She would say things like that. Even when I adjusted the amount of salt to make it milder, she would still complain, saying, "It's tasteless. It lacks flavor." I guess she just can't stand anything I do. My mother-in-law seems to have a complete misunderstanding about my job as a researcher. She thinks that I'm just doing what I like and making a little money on the side. You're so lucky, pretending to be a researcher and all. Your salary isn't even that good, right? You're just playing around with the money Ethan worked so hard to earn. What a privileged life you have. She would say these things until the very moment I leave the house, when I'm going out on my day off. Well, it's not just on my days off. Even on regular work days, I'm the last one to leave the house. And when I'm putting on my shoes at the entrance, she would stand behind me, looking down on me and muttering, "It's amazing how she can say the same things day after day." It had become such routine that I stopped paying too much attention to it. Well, if it were just me being told off at home, it would have been tolerable. One day, I discovered something unfortunate. My mother-in-law had been bad-mouthing me to the neighbors. My daughter-in-law did nothing but pursue her own interests, leaving Ethan to work all the time. She hardly does any household chores. I'm so frustrated with this lazy wife. It was all baseless accusations. She must have known that I often hang the laundry in the yard. But she was taken behind my back to the neighbors on the other side of the fence. Maybe she deliberately said those things loud enough for me to hear. But when I found out that she had been spreading such rumors about the neighbors, I was truly furious. Within the neighborhood, I had been labeled as she spends too much while earning so little. She can't even do housework properly. She lets her husband work all the time while she does nothing. 
such unfounded negative impressions had formed about me. It was true that my husband and I both worked, so we only cleaned our bedroom on weekends. But our living spaces and my mother in law's living spaces were properly separated on the first and second floors, so we shouldn't have caused any inconvenience. However, it seems that my mother in law simply disliked me. She would constantly say unreasonable things to me, bullying me, and spreading rumors around the neighbors. Moreover, Ethan, my husband, was naturally clean and tidy. And we kept our furniture to a minimum. By maintaining a minimalist approach, our room stayed clean without requiring daily cleaning. Yet, my mother in law would say things like, You don't even clean your room? Poor Ethan. Don't you notice the dust piling up? She would say such things. I couldn't help but wonder. How did my mother in law know that there was dust in her room? When I suddenly asked about it, she visibly became flustered and replied, I happened to catch a glimpse of your second floor room while I clean your stairs. Since you're free anyway, why don't you properly clean it? She insisted on her version of events. Our room is always closed, so she shouldn't be able to see inside. But when I tried to inquire further, my mother in law became defensive and locked herself in her own room, leaving the truth unknown. It seems that my mother in law sets the standard based on my husband, who graduated from a top tier university and works for a prestigious company. She must think that as a researcher, I don't measure up her son. Yet, I work diligently every day. And earn a decent salary. Still, my mother in law refers to me as a lazy wife, a wife who relies on her low earning husband, or something along those lines. One day, as I was about to leave for work, my mother in law stopped me. Today is your father's hospital appointment. Will you come with us? Huh? Well, I have work right now. I don't care about that. I'm not feeling well. You're his daughter, so you should accompany your father. She unilaterally said it like that. My father in law has always had trouble with his legs, and my mother in law would always accompany him. Since my mother in law locked herself in her room, I reluctantly contacted my workplace, took the day off, and accompanied my father in law to the hospital. Sorry about this, Harper. I know you're busy, he said and treated me to a meal on the way back home. I liked my father in law, so if I could be of help like this, it wasn't a big deal. But if only they had had told me in advance, I could have taken time off from work. While thinking that, I returned home and found that my mother in law wasn't there. Perhaps my father in law was tired because he went straight to his room and lay down, so he didn't know. But the truth was that my mother in law had simply gone out with the neighbors that day. Forgetting that it was the day of my father in law's hospital appointment, my mother in law had made plans with the neighbors, prioritizing her own convenience and passing on the accompanying duty to me. I confronted my mother in law and asked, Why did you lie? You're always playing around every day, so I can't do it once in a while. That was all she said. I had reached my limit. Every day, I had to endure snide remarks and the numerous negative rumors circulating in the neighborhood. To top it off, I was forced to take time off work by lying. All for the convenience of my mother in law, and my life was being constantly disrupted. To begin with, I should never have agreed to live together, but right after we got married, my father in law had an accident that left him paralyzed in my legs. That's when my mother in law said, I feel anxious being alone, so I want us to live together. 
So, in our second year of marriage, we built this two-generation house and decided to live with my in-laws. At the time, my mother-in-law said, "You don't have to adjust your life to fit ours. Just being in the same place is enough." She said something like that. Harper, you don't have to worry about anything. So please, she said that cheerfully. So I reluctantly accepted living together. In the end, I fit right into my mother-in-law's scheme. Regardless, my husband and I definitely wanted our own home, and we made sure to build a spacious and barrier-free house that we could use even in our old age. Of course, I'm referring to the space on the first floor where my mother-in-law and the others currently live. We thought about it a lot, and my husband and I paid for it ourselves. My mother-in-law shows no gratitude toward me and goes as far as to bully me. How can she do such things? When I think about it, it makes me feel foolish for silently living in this house. Until now. I had desperately tried to avoid deep contemplation and divert my gaze, but it seems that in reverse, it became a source of stress for me. One day, my husband looked at me with the wide eyes as I lay down before going to sleep. Hey, hey, Harper, what's up with your head? Huh? When my husband said that, I looked at my head in the mirror and noticed a bald spot about the size of a ten yen coin. Is that a plushy arrieta? Is your current job that stressful? My husband looked at me with a concerned expression. I see. He has no idea that my mother-in-law has been bullying me, so he thinks my stress is solely about work. I didn't say anything to my husband because I didn't want to taint the atmosphere at home. In fact. I didn't want to speak ill of my beloved husband's own mother. However, the stress that had visibly manifested in my body made me feel suffocated, and everything I had been holding back came pouring out with tears. Harper, what's wrong? If something's bothering you, please tell me. While comforting me as I cried, my husband said those words. I decided to tell my husband everything. I want them to repay the full cost of building this house. When I said that, my husband's eyes widened. Huh? Why are you suddenly saying that? He was surprised as he said that. However, as I finished telling him about the past two years since we started living together, without holding anything back, my husband was in tears. I see. You've been going through all of that for two years. I'm sorry. I didn't realize anything. I put you through so much, Harper. Saying that, he embraced me. My husband seemed to understand my feelings. Let's go talk to my parents right away. Saying that, he took my hand and we headed downstairs. Mom, Dad, we need to talk. My husband said that and sat across from my in-laws. I also sat next to my husband, facing forward. As my husband rubbed my neck, I took a deep breath and said, "This, I can't take any more of my mother-in-law's bullying. Since it seems like she dislikes me, I want them to repay the full cost of the construction expenses I've paid." Upon hearing this. My in-laws were surprised, especially my mother-in-law, who started to panic. My father-in-law, confused, said, "What do you mean?" So I decided to tell my father-in-law everything that I had just told my husband. I also revealed the fact that when I accompanied my father-in-law to the hospital before, my mother-in-law was actually out with someone from the neighborhood. Upon hearing this. My father-in-law began trembling, and it was clear that he was angry without him having to say a word. My mother-in-law, sensing the situation, hurriedly said, "But Harper doesn't earn much, does she? Ethan was the one who paid for most of the cost of this house, right?" She said that. In response, my husband said, "Mom, 
Let me make this clear: a herper not only earns as much as I do, but even more. The research she's doing is highly prestigious, commissioned by the state in the country. Yet, you've decided that she's not earning anything on her own. He said that clearly, expressing it to my mother-in-law. However, my mother-in-law didn't back down easily and said, "Even if that's the case, isn't this daughter-in-law intentionally refusing to have children just to harass me?" She's a disrespectful daughter-in-law. She said such a thing. That's why. I tried to explain, but my husband stopped me and said this: the decision about having children is something we discussed and agreed upon a couple. It's not about intentionally not having them or infertility. Right now, we both want to focus on our careers. It has nothing to do with you, mom. You don't have to say it like that. Overwhelmed by her son's forcefulness, his mother's face turned increasingly pale. Despite that, my mother-in-law continued, and my husband continued as well. Besides, didn't we agree from the start that you wouldn't interfere in our marriage? Yet you go around snooping in our room and pushing your household chores onto Harper, just sitting next to him. I could feel my husband's irritation, caught between the pressure from her son sitting across from her and her husband beside her. My mother-in-law seemed almost unable to bear it any more. And then, my husband revealed a certain fact to my in-laws. I've kept quiet about this, but the construction expenses for this house were actually covered by Harper's mother-in-law. It's not just our money. I was told to keep it a secret from Harper, but I've reached my limit. Upon hearing this, my in-laws opened their eyes wide in surprise. Yes, in reality, my husband and I hardly contributed financially to the construction costs of this house. When my father passed away a few years ago, my mother set aside inheritance he left behind. When he mentioned a plan to build a duplex house. She said, "I want you to use your father's inheritance for it." Initially, we refused, but my mother said to me, "You have the right to use it too." Grateful for her words, I decided to accept her offer and use that money. But I asked my husband to keep it a secret from his parents, thinking that it would make them feel obligated. I believed they would be more considerate if they didn't know. However, now that my mother-in-law knew everything, she blushed and lowered her head. Unable to bear that sight, my father-in-law spoke sternly, "Apologize to her right away, and tomorrow retract all the bad things you've said about her to the neighbors." He said that to her. I also don't want to live with a mother who would do such things to my precious wife, so I'm thinking of selling this house and repaying the money to Harper and my mother-in-law. Dad, what do you think? I asked my father-in-law. He nodded firmly, but my mother-in-law cried beside him and said, "Please stop that. This house is so comfortable to live in." She pleaded with a messy face. But up with her selfishness, I showed her the circular alpicia I had. I've reached my limit too. I don't want to keep hurting myself anymore. I said firmly. At that moment, even my mother-in-law fell silent and bowed her head. The next day, my father-in-law and husband went around to the neighbors' houses with my mother-in-law to correct the lies and the fabrications she had spread. My father-in-law and husband called me. You truly a wonderful wife. Since then, the harassment from my mother-in-law ceased, and we were no longer looked at strangely by the neighbors. After discussions with my husband, we eventually decided to sell this house. My mother-in-law also found it uncomfortable to stay, especially after spreading lies among the neighbors. So. My father-in-law decided to move to an apartment near his workplace, 
where they could live peacefully together. On the other hand, we went to repay the money to my mother with the proceeds from the house sale. However, my mother said to us, "That's your share of the inheritance." So use it as you please," she said that to us. With that money, we built a new house at the location that was conveniently in the middle of our workplaces, and now we live a luxury life as a couple. Sometimes my mother comes to visit. Isn't it wonderful to live with the person you love? She teases me like that. When my mother comes next time, there's something I want to tell her. We'll be a family of three next year.